Welcome to yet another episode of Band Stripped. In tonight's episode, we have a very special surprise for you. It's Justin Swartz from the duo, a dynamic duo called the Amblers. Now, we've been looking forward to having them for a few weeks. They have a very distinct and unique energy, which we are hoping to share with you tonight on Hot 919. <music> Mr. Justin Swart, welcome to the Bandstrip Studio. Thank you so much for having me. Now, the first thing I have to say, that is an incredibly impressive beard, man. Thank you. It's taken a lot of patience. <laughs> How much of time? We're doing two, three years here? Maybe a, a little bit longer. Yeah. Although I haven't really been counting, but I have cut it quite a bit shorter before. Yeah, yeah. So this isn't like <laughs> terminal beard. <laughs> now, you must have, obviously, I mean, it's, it's a very impressive body of work, if I may say. Thank you. Um, you, you must have some sort of beard oil. Or, or some sort of treatment to keep it in that uh, it's uh, condition texture and, yeah, and condition yeah uh, I've used a few things you know yeah. but yeah I do, I do use a beard oil at the moment I think it's a beard oil called Earth Beard I don't right right don't really and I at one point did have a quite a decent beard yeah and the one thing I noticed as the beard got longer I got more advice from people on how to treat my beard that's true and lots of questions I, I often get stopped by absolutely <laughs> random people asking yeah. me for photos. Um, so you, people stop you to ask for a picture. But because of the beard, not because of the music. <laughs> do you find that if you walk across a road, like you can stop traffic? Everyone's like, oh, wow, that's an impressive beard, I man. do, but, but I, I think that's my looks. Yeah. yeah. In terms of the bro code between <laughs> men, you'll always find, I mean, men are not always complimentary to other men about many things, but beards are one of the things that people are generally very complimentary on. Absolutely. I've even had women come up yeah. to me and ask me what advice they can give me for their husband's beard. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and the best advice is don't cut it. So it is <laughs> indeed a power tool. Sure. Now, thank you for joining us in studio. Um, you normally um, travel together with Jason. Yes. Uh, Jason Hinch. And you guys form the dynamic duo of the Amblers. Now, I've listened to your music um, at large. Um Yay. And I can say safely that you sound nothing like I've heard recently in South African music. Um, so I'm very curious as to where the band started and how this Amblers project or duo was shaped from the start. Sure. Well, it, it's, been, it's been quite a simple process for yeah. us. It's not one that we put too much thought into. Um, Jason and I know... Sort of ambled along into it. Too. Yes, and that's exactly yeah, yeah. it. I mean, that's really where the name of the Amblers yeah. comes from. Oh, it's wow, just okay. Kind that was of, a lucky yeah, guess. Absolutely. Just kind of doing your thing and living your life and, and, and you know, extracting the most out of every moment. But, um, you know, Jason and I, we've both been in the music industry for quite some time before yeah. the Amblers. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we were touching bases. We just got to know each other. Right. And and when we started, when we started out, we didn't have too much expectation. I mean, we didn't go out saying we we wanted to achieve anything specifically. We just wanted to make music that we both understood. Yeah. Um. And that was just natural. It wasn't too complicated and something that we could do, if that makes yeah. sense. You know, because I think something um, tangible. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Something that we didn't need to add too much. We didn't need to get a bassist or anything else we could just get together just the two of us and what that produced was what it was and build your rhythm build your melody build absolutely. a sound absolutely right? and you know we get asked a lot of times i get asked a lot of times you know how difficult is it to kind of fit this minimalistic thing in yeah. because it is sometimes tough but for us it hasn't been difficult because we haven't pursued anything that doesn't work with just the two of us you know sure, it's very sure. easy to and you know very quickly it whether it's going to absolutely it out, you scrap yeah. it you move on yeah, yeah so you know luckily we, we we've kind of been fortunate enough to have um, the music that we've we've recorded so far be the kind of stuff that works. But it's really that, you know, we wanted to get together, we wanted to make the music that yeah. we enjoyed and something that was simple, and, and we've been lucky enough to have it be something exciting. Now, in terms of musical shapes, obviously you're a duo, there's drums, guitars, vocals, right? Now, people could, obviously, there's a few quick examples that people will generally try and pigeonhole you in. However, your music, when I listen to it, it's very hard to pigeonhole it because it's, there were quite a variety of influences there. Now, I'm very curious in that that regard, what sort of music did each of you listen to? And you you are here today, so yeah. you particularly, that played a part in maybe shaping your style of music. Sure. Um, obviously, there's definitely a very, very strong blues rock element yeah. in that, but but not in terms of like old school classic blues, like, yeah. you know, John Lee Hooker, yeah. Howling Wolf, More those guys, you know, museum. absolutely, mm. you know, things like, I mean, a big influence for me has been Jack White. Um, right. 
uh, the Black Keys in a way. Um, I but like the Black Keys very much. Sure, that and, and, a, and as far as my my personal musical taste yeah. goes, I don't have a. I've got a very very broad musical taste. So yeah. I really enjoy classical music. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy jazz. I enjoy a lot of different kinds of folk music. Um, I like a lot of older music, like before the the like digital yeah. generation as well. Well, everything you just I said like now, approach. I can safely say that I pick it up in your music, especially the folk influence, because I think the sure the melodic influence in terms of the songs is coming from that folk. Absolutely, that folk and the elements. storytelling element as well yeah, in terms right. of, yeah. of of just that kind of um, swing to it. And at the, at the end of the day, you know what's nice about that for us and where the folk element or influence. It's it's easy to tone it down. It's easy for me to play the songs. Yeah, yeah. They sound completely different because there's no drummer and no Jason, but it's still there in in like Essence a singer songwriter kind of yeah, sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's the interesting part of this whole bandstrip project that we've been doing over the last twenty odd weeks, is that we are getting to your songs as close to as they were written as possible. Sure. Which is very authentic. It's very unique. Absolutely. It's an insight into the songwriter's mind. What were you thinking? And then yeah. when people listen to your your EP, etc., yeah. they will get the polished sound, right? Sure. Thing. Now, your first song that you've decided to play for us is a track called I Wrote You a Letter. Yes, sir. Uh, is this a true story or is this a fictional story? It is a fictional story. Um, it's a personal story. Um, we don't often, I don't often like to tell people what the songs are about. Sure. Um, just the, because I prefer for them to, to grab their own meaning out of it. Fair enough. I mean, as a songwriter, I, I, sure. I agree with that. But, because, I mean, I'm yeah. happy to divulge it from, I mean, I, I you know, there are opportunities where it is relevant yeah. and, and situations where it is relevant. But for me, um, I struggled a lot in my younger yeah. in my younger life with heroin addiction. And I wrote you a letter is really a, a letter to, it's almost personifying heroin addiction as a woman that I had see. made a lot of promises that were a lie. So, well, you know, and this is the first time in any interview I've given that much that. In, in depth in thank a song. Thank you for sharing so, with that. I mean, that's oh, a, you're welcome. It's a very vulnerable space. Sure. Um, and, and, and thank you for sharing that. Oh, you're because welcome. That metaphor, and this is the genius of songwriting and the yeah. beauty of songwriting, is that you can disguise something incredibly painful and tough and traumatic in this metaphor, and people will draw their meaning from it. Sure, absolutely. As they will, but you know what it means And it to all you. depends on where the, you know, their moment of struggle or their moment of pain yeah. is. It, it relates to that, yeah. Do you find the song, when you perform it now, do you feel a form of catharsis when you… In a way, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know… Th- that part of my life is so far behind me now, yeah. um, but it was still instrumental into how I kind of grew up and became an adult, uh, so to speak, although I did become an adult yeah, quite yeah. late in life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We eventually do. <laughs> yeah. Um, my force but of yes, will. It, it, yeah. is, it is nice to be able to sing that song outside of that cage. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, we're looking forward to listening to the stripped-down version of I Wrote You Later. Thank you. This is Justin Swart from The Amblers with his first track on band stripped. It's called I Wrote You a Letter. Now I wrote you a letter to tell you how I feel And I wrote to tell you Of my love I wrote to make you real And I read to the preacher To tell love what you done but I found him dead behind his threats. Woman, what have you done?
cold in my bed You made me promise You said that you'd be true And I held you to your devilish roots You'll get what's coming Welcome back to Band Stripped. I have Justin Swart with me in studio tonight, and we're having some fun talking music, playing some music, and really taking a deep dive into what are the amblers. Is that correct? What are? Well, it is now. <laughs> Justin, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, j- now, you touched on something quite interesting earlier. Because you are a duo, it, it comes with inherent challenges, um, especially when you are writing a song, then you've got to take that song into studio. Sure. And you put a lot of production into it, and you do what you need to do. But then you've got to translate that into live performance. Now, from what you've said, I can see that you guys have given that quite a bit of thought because what you said at the start was that everything you're doing, you want to be able to execute sure. to its end degree. Um, give me an idea what your process in studio has been like so far. Well, everything that the Amblers has recorded up until now, including um, the EP that the first single is releasing on Friday. Yeah. Um, and we'll hopefully have it out um, in the in the first bit of 2020. This but is your second EP, third, third EP, right? Third. Well, yeah. we released the first EP in 2017, the yeah. full album in 2018, and now we're starting um, just releasing the first singles of yeah. the next, hopefully, album, yeah. um, but at the very least an EP. Everything we do um, in the recording process is is single takes. Right. We've not released one song that, that has been comped or chopped up and pasted together wow. at all. Um, and that doesn't mean that the vocal, the guitar, the drums, everything is done simultaneously like a live studio album, but the drum take is one single take. Right. The so you're trying to get it as organic as possible. Abs- and also, mm. it was important to us from the beginning to capture a moment in time that's unbroken, even though they're different moments when Sorry, it comes Justin, to... Sorry, Justin, say that again. A moment in time that is unbroken. Unbroken. So basically... That's yeah, a beautiful way to phrase that. Sure. So mm-hmm. it would then reflect who we were, not just as people, but also as musicians, because if it's one take... That's the best you can offer in that moment. Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, we want, we want what we do to be as vulnerable and also authentic as possible. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and that's just for us. And it's, it's worked out. I can tell you, I picked that up in your music because uh, the, the music has a, there's a rootedness, there's a rawness to it, but it's authentic. And that's why I said you guys sound like nobody else because sure. a lot of the music that we're listening to, and listen, I mean, production in music around the world has increased several Absolutely, levels right over yeah. the years. But there's something that you guys are doing that, that that gives it a very authentic raw sound, which is lovely to hear, especially for musicians. Like, yeah, wow, that sounds really good. You can sort of get the sense of its organic feel, whereas a lot of stuff that you that you're playing up against is heavily produced up, and a lot of those sounds can't be replicated yeah. live. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. Um, look, a lot of people are making great music, and you know, the digital age of music has certainly. Um, as you're saying, it's become very polished, and yeah. I mean the the quality of audio that's coming out today is absolutely absolutely exceptional. Yeah, yeah. and the tools, but beautiful tools. Yeah. If you go and listen to like, I heard it from the grapevine. Yeah, I'm often gay. Yeah, I still have it in my car. There's by also the way. just What's something going on the there that there. we are unable. Yeah, we're, yeah. we've we've lost that element of it, and I mean, and it's R and B, but all the instruments are live there. Absolutely, Bass, I mean, if, drums. if if you think of 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 that, I mean, the whole drum kit is is one microphone yeah. and you know just the level of care that goes into what goes into that recording yeah. forget the mixing process it's just 
everything is so well thought out and so beautifully um, artistically created. And yeah. that's something that intrigues me. It's something that I understand. It's something that I'd like to get better at, you yeah. know, being able to do that. And same with everything. Practice makes perfect. Absolutely. The more that you do it, the better you get at it. And obviously that translates into the buzz of live performance. Sure. Which I'm sure for you guys with the energy and the type of songs that, you, that you're writing, you guys must absolutely thrive on that. We love playing live. Yeah, yeah I mean, it is definitely a live kind of sound. Yeah. Um, and, and that's great because we aren't too far off when we, when we hit a live show. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I think it's hard to, to perform a song identically the same every yeah. single time. But I do think that there's a lot of beauty in that as yeah. well, in the fact that it's 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 little what it is in that moment. Inflections, etc. Yeah, depending on the audience, depending on you know, sometimes you want a bit of an extra solo. You look sure. back at the drummer and you say, "Absolutely," hey, right, and that's easy to do because there's just two of us. You know <laughs> exactly. what I mean? And Jason's just so solid; he just nods and and it goes, keeps going, "Yeah, you're ripping it to shreds." Yeah. There, where is your music uh, being received, in your opinion? Where is it best being received at the moment? Um, say in South Africa as an example. Um, I definitely think here in Joburg and yeah. definitely Bloemfontein has been, nice. crazily enough, Bloemfontein has been huge. Bloom uh, too, I mean, many people surprised, a very progressive town. Absolutely. So. I mean, we, um, I want to say that we su we were surprised, but but we aren't really because that sounds like, you know, we think Bloom is like a, yeah, you know, it's a big far, student town. I mean, it is yeah. a big student town. And, so. and we've had two number one campus uh, campus number oh, wow. ones on Kofi FM. Nice. So that's yeah. been great. I mean, you know, I suppose a reward in itself is just the fact that people are enjoying it because that, yeah. that's what it's made for. So in terms of energy and crowd, where have you found, which are the, the gigs that you've enjoyed the most playing live and to that particular audience? Where have those gigs been? I think our two favorite gigs of this year, definitely right at the top, uh, was a, a show that we played with uh, Ray Gun Royale and Shadow Club right. for Uncle Mothers. That was incredible. Just the whole setup of that is, yeah. is so nicely done. And then uh, another standout would have been the Boutique Farm Festival, which was like a like a small intimate festival that happened at the Tuifontein Malkere. Right, and, right. and that was pretty cool. So those are definitely the two yeah. stands out, given that you know we aren't doing too many shows yeah, yeah. Yet, if if you know what I mean. So I'm scheduling with Jason. and You've Wolf got a more Blair. discerning schedule, so to speak. Absolutely, we we <laughs> a forced discernment within the. Within I like the that. Listen, that's not too different to the Eskimo. I mean, I rock yeah. up. I'm like the lesser spotted leopard. <laughs> I play like four or five gigs a year. Yeah. And normally I pop up by surprise somewhere sure. to, to play. So and I love playing live, but I love playing live because I don't have to play all the time. Absolutely. That's where my yeah, joy I'm very from. grateful for that as well. Yeah. You know. Um, and something you never get tired of, do you? No, not at Speaking all. Speaking of which, it's the title of your next single. That it is. You like what I did there? Yes, that was clever. Exactly. Thank you very much. So Tired is a song. When did you guys write this one? It was written around... It was Tired's from the first EP. Um, it hasn't been... It wasn't lying around for too long. Yeah. Um, tired is about a relationship. Right. An actual relationship. Oh, nice. True um, stories. And yeah, just as relationships are, relationships can be tough, and the good ones are the tough ones. Yeah. You know, working through things, figuring out stuff. So yeah, just a kind of a, a memoir. Don't you love how the swath of emotional energy, whether negative or positive, innately contributes to songwriting? I mean, yeah, you could have a relationship, you break up, three months later, something pops in your head, and you go, "Wow, I really need to get this out of my system." Absolutely. Um, you know. Our emotions and our struggles definitely make for the best songs. Yeah. So so this is something you th that you wrote a while back and now is obviously translated. And w would you call this a classic love song or is it a unconventional sort of story of love? I would say it's less conventional. I'd say more, it's more of a love rant. A love um, rant. Yeah, than, than anything else. I know so the it, audience at it, home it, now. It's not a begging and pleading. Are clapping their hands with me <laughs> to know what a yeah. love rant is. yeah. Um, I think it's just from the framework of, of being a frustrated person in a relationship and, yeah. and wanting it to be better. We've all been there. Um, Absolutely. And I, th and I find these songs, see, now, now that you know what the song is about and the audience knows what the song is about, for those of you out there and you want to get a sense of perspective on <laughs> if you are in a relationship like this, this is Justin Swart from The Amblers with his next track on Bandstripped. It's called Tired. <laughs> Um... 
Welcome back to the Band Strip Studio. I'm in studio tonight with Justin Swart from the Amblers. And we're sharing good times, bad times, and everything else, and how it contributes to songwriting. Justin, welcome back, man. Thank you. And thank you. you you've been quite open in terms of uh, how you guys put all this together. And, you know, we also have time in the studio to, to really unpack this. In terms of your songwriting process, when you first started writing music, how long ago was that? long i've i've been writing you know i think it started for me with poetry and just yeah. just you know writing short things do you remember your first poem i don't i've written so many so, so you don't I remember don't how bad know. it was or how bad no, your it was first probably, song was. it was probably pretty bad because yeah, my um, first songs were terrible yeah i think the more you write the better you get yeah um and i think you know good advice not for that, yeah, i don't think that mm. this is an advice section but that yeah. if i was going to give anyone advice, advice I, yeah. I would say that i'd say you know what get Get the bad stuff because everyone's get no it one, out of your get system. It out first, <laughs> yes. so that the good stuff can come out. You know, and I think that again, practice makes perfect, and the more that you write, the better that you get. But I mean, I've been writing songs for a long time, yeah. and I've gotten better at that, and I've gotten better at at articulating them, them the way that it makes sense to yeah. me creatively. Um, you know, I've also I also think that as you get better at doing anything you, you are able to simplify things yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. definitely yeah, I agree yeah. yeah I think that you know it's a weird process because in songwriting sometimes you think or music or in anything that I can become more complex but you start to understand the beauty and simplicity absolutely like, like the art for me how can it. I convey this yeah. in the least amount of words or in yeah. the least amount of music yeah, um, chord changes absolutely <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. so um, it's, it's definitely been a similar process yeah. for me um, because obviously when you started writing when you first started writing I don't think any songwriter has any particular message that they want to get out there but sometimes thematically as a human being as you evolve you start to write thematically subconsciously 
and there's a general, no, you've got an image, and the band has an image, and there's a certain vibe in your songs that I can pick up. Is there any particular message, whether conscious or subconscious, that you think you're trying to send out to the universe or to people who listen to your music? This is going to sound so crazy for a rock that band. That sounds crazy, think, man. Yeah, I think for me, um, if there is a theme, it's about personal responsibility. Right. Um, you know, it's not the kind of thing that most musicians yeah, yeah. put out there, but for me it really is because that's been a central part of my story in my life, yeah. is being able to take responsibility for... For myself yep. and not blame everyone else and everything else even if they are to blame you know sometimes other people are to blame yeah but the reality is blaming someone else never helps you you know yeah, and it, it doesn't does. help you take responsibility it help journey, actually, so yeah. that really you know my mindset with things is is definitely like that so you know i want to take personal responsibility for things i want to take personal responsibility for growing myself and growing my own life yep. and i think the songs although maybe not actually about taking personal responsibility a lot of the songs are my way of yes, yes. taking personal responsibility no, or like expressing that, yeah. that yeah and you'll find that that over time that might also evolve and shape into different things absolutely as a human being as you change and as your i needs grow change, it right? becomes something else absolutely i was just uh, uh, the reason i asked you that question is in this past week i've been listening to a lot of jason raz yeah who i love you know he's an incredible artist and songwriter amazing and a fantastic songwriter and his early songs were I mean they, they were unbelievable in terms of its musical timing intonation syntax just lyrically how it's crafted and I found that now as he's evolving as a musician his songs are actually becoming simpler they're really about three main about two main topics it's really about love and hope yeah and I think he he unashamedly just spreads as much love and hope as possible. As that's what's true. important to him right now. And that's now. his theme yeah, now, absolutely. you see. So. Uh, and I totally get that. And I mean, it's beautiful that, I think it's a, it's an, it's, uh, there's a deep beauty in, in not having to polish things for people's pleasure. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that I, that always stuck with me, I, I watched uh, an interview with David Bowie, yeah. um, where he said that the worst thing you, you can ever do as an artist of any kind, not yeah. just, is, is to, is to play to the crowd. Never play to the gallery. That's what he said. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and that's something that's really hard. You'll never always be satisfied. Sure, and that's something that's hard <laughs> to do. Yeah. You know, but I, I think when you're doing it for yourself, and you, you know, all that fluff as you mature starts to become unimportant. You are left with something way more simple. Yeah. But way more powerful. Yeah, I think so. I but also the thing is, listen in South Africa particularly, it's a good lesson to learn because. There are times where you guys will play at a festival where there's a packed audience and sometimes you're playing where three guys are actually listening to your music. Absolutely. So if and you, that happens a lot. <laughs> if you're an SA musician, you've lived that life. You know what we're talking yeah. about. Right? Yeah. Now, speaking of music and your ambitions as a band, um, you're obviously recording and there's a consistency in terms of what you're creating and releasing. What do you guys hope to achieve in the world of music, starting with South Africa and maybe internationally? Do you have any hopes for that? You know what? We don't. And I know yeah. that that sounds cliched maybe. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we've gone that far. I think right now we really are just enjoying what we're doing and we're also doing what we can. Yeah. So instead of setting ourselves up for some kind of failure in term personally yeah. of like some expectation or that we'll be successful when we are touring internationally yeah. or we'll finally feel like we're there when... You know what I mean? We're yeah. having 100,000 local streams a week, whatever the case may be. You know, everyone determines um, success differently. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's still for us just having the opportunity to do what we can when we can do it. And right now, the majority of that opportunity has been in recording and releasing music, which is why we've been fairly consistent in doing that. Yeah. So we're definitely gonna gonna stay with that MO at the moment. And then obviously broadly, the more people that listen to our music, the more people we can reach, the more people, you know, yeah. that find out what we're doing, you know, that's great for us. And that's enough for us. Well I'll say this, my personal view is that your music is the type of music that genuinely, if heard by the right audience, can draw a degree of critical acclaim. Sure. Now I say that also because I read some of the international reviews Outside of the country, yeah. on people listening to your music, and you know, obviously, quite amazed by the yeah, sound. Yeah, we were super creating. surprised. I mean, it, it was great. It felt really good. Yeah, and it's fantastic yeah. to be acknowledged in. I mean, beyond our borders. Yeah, 
by people who have no real reason to have to listen to you except that you make good music. Absolutely. Um, oh, it's a good feeling. And it, give, it gives you a lot of confidence as an artist, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. But what I've experienced... Don't is, get carried away, you're saying. Well, no. What <laughs> I've experienced is that, you know, releasing The Dustling Man, yeah. it was so free. I did, we didn't think anything was going to come of That's it. That's what it's called. The Dustling Man. The, the first EP was called I The Dustling Man. I spent some time trying to unravel that title. What is Dustling? Okay, so it was called Dustling. I have to, I'm sharing more about our inner workings on this show than I have in <laughs> any other interview. The Dustling Man really came out about the fact that we are in incredibly fragile. So there is no word called the Dustling. It, the dustling comes from so. dust. <laughs> there is no word like called the Dustling. I genuinely have but a fair But the same way that you say like a, a gosling or yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. an inkling or whatever. You created a word. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and that word was just about fragility. It, yeah, yeah. it really was. And that's where the Dustling Man came fragility. from. Fragility. And, um, you know, but with the Dustling Man, we had no expectations. Yeah. And, and, People received it so well, and that was really, really awesome. Then when we started recording Radio Old Mo, yeah. and it started to get like post-production, ready to go out, yeah. I started to get very insecure because, just personally, because… Of the first it, reaction. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. is it going to… Is it going to… Um, is it going to measure up? You know, is well, this where we tank? Well, that's a very important thing you mentioned there because I think any artist who is successful, any artist or any actor or actress, that is, when you have a degree of success, you always, you, the, the tendency is to become afraid of meeting that expectation. Sure. But what you're saying is psychologically what you guys have done is lowered your expectation in general so that you can be free. Absolutely. And you're not playing to expectations. Because that's what's important to us. It makes us... You know, I can't speak for other bands, but definitely for the Ambers, yeah. it makes us better at what we do in the moment. I when agree. We're not so phased about what it is. I mean, even, um, you know, Ratty Old Mo got a lot of international critical yeah. acclaim, um, which was really, really awesome. Um, but in hindsight, Ratty Old Mo would have done so differently. And that's the problem with anything artistic. Yeah. Um, and so we set ourselves very specific deadlines. And when we hit that deadline, what we've got is what we've got. Because if we don't do that, you will just change and change. And yeah, you never end, up, tend to do you that, never end yeah. up with a product. Yeah. So with this new, with the new um, um, single that's being released on Friday, it's called The Birds and the Bees. Right. And um, the first time I've, I listened to it was, was actually in an interview. Because once it came back from mastery, yeah. I put it aside and I didn't go back to it um, because I was afraid. Because what it was, it was going to go out. It was going to go yeah. out to the world. All of that stuff had been set up. I'd rather let it be than torment myself about what it's not. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But I've been very happy with what I've heard so far. So it's been great. Listen, it's, it's, it's a good way to record and process because, I mean, you're right. You could end up changing things It's a never-ending cycle. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I think, one of the talents of an artist to know when you've done the right thing and just go with your instinct and say, right, it's done. It is what it is. And it's about capturing that moment. And put time. yourself out there. You see, yeah. at the end of the day, if you're not prepared to risk, if you can't emotionally and psychologically put yourself out, out there for yeah. people to either love or hate, well, you'll never put anything out there. Absolutely. So your next track is called Sometimes. It's your third track on the band strip studio. What is sometimes, what's the essence of the song? I was going to ask you what it's, it's about. Also, it's, yeah, it's uh -huh. also locked in a relationship, yeah. just a different aspect or a different um, perspective of a relationship. Um, out of the, on The Dustling Man, because that song is also from The Dustling Man, yeah. um, one of the two songs that were specifically about an actual romantic relationship right. um, or, you know, not a platonic relationship. Yeah. And it's just very much the same thing. I mean, it's just expressing how I felt in that moment um, yeah. about that relationship. And it's as simple as that. The Nothing people, deeper. Uh, the two uh, people in question for these last two songs, uh, they've heard the song and do they know it's about them? Probably not. They've heard the song. Um, but they don't know it's about I, them. I, I, I don't know. We've never had that discussion. <laughs> person is very much still a part of my life. So, oh, I see. Yeah. I so, see. Yeah. Um, you know, at the end of the day, toughness in relationships don't mean relationships have to end. But as a songwriter, you must get that question quite a bit. Somebody listens to a song like this and goes, well, okay, that's interesting. And then... Justin, who is this about? Yeah, they do. Um, my answer usually to that question is, 
we don't tell people what our songs are about. Yeah. You know, you've, you guys have literally been the first. Michael in a very it. polite way, obviously. I don't sit there and say, sorry, I'm important, you're not, yeah, yeah. and I'm not going to tell you what the song's about. It's more a case of we'd like you to get your own meaning from it. Well, I'm going to give you some, like a little trick. Michael Stipe, uh, whenever they played Losing My Religion, which is one of two songs R.E.M. played at every gig they did since they released the song. Yeah. Uh, Man on the Moon was the other one. But whenever he announced Losing My Religion, he always said, this next song is about you. Yeah, absolutely. And he was talking to everyone. Sure. And I thought it was fantastic. It is fantastic. And Isn't it's it? clever. Yeah. Yeah. So I just remember that for some times. This is Justin Swartz with his third and final track, The Amblers, with Sometimes. Just a stone's throw. Welcome back to Band Stripped. That was Justin Swart on behalf and part of the duo, half of the duo of the Amblers, playing his third and final track called Sometimes Right Here on the Band Stripped Studio. Justin, thank you for sharing your music with us and sharing your story with us. Uh, I'm not completely done with you because in talking to you, I, I became very curious. Um, do you, have you released physical copies of all these or are they all in digital only? Um, the most of our music is, is on digital. Obviously, we lean... We lean more to vinyl. but I was about to say, but, because you're giving off a strong vinyl Yeah, vibe, we yeah. lean more to vinyl, yeah, yeah, yeah. but vinyl, you've got to play your cards right with vinyl. Because, yeah. In terms uh, of cost of manufacturing, etc. Et yeah, yeah, look, at the end of the day, um, in the modern music industry, you've, you've kind of, you, you've got to be a business, you've got to be business people as yeah, well. Yeah, sure. Uh, and at the end of the day, that is, that is part of our yeah. MO. Um, but I mean, even though vinyl sales have creeped and grown exponentially over yeah. the last couple of years. If you if you look at those numbers and you look at that data, yeah. it's actually really old bands. No, yeah, very yeah. few new it's bands. Back catalog are, stuff that people are stocking up on. Absolutely, it's isn't it? people are yeah. going back to the Pink 60s Floyd, and Dark Side 100%. Of the moon. Yeah. Those are the vinyls that are making up the bulk of this vinyl explosion. So, yeah. you know, it's definitely our format and our vibe because we're a lot more analog. Yeah. Um, 
you know, we will release some some CDs and stuff like that. You know, if we feel the the demand is high, but far few pe- far fewer people are collecting yeah. CDs anymore. And They're collecting gigs? vinyl. Well, at our live gigs, we don't really have too much. We yeah. we might have a few vinyl. A lot of times, we have skateboards and things like that because yeah. we've had some endless skateboards and stuff on our merch list. I can see stuff. the T-shirt. I am a dustling man. Absolutely. That's what we're, we're gonna to. do. One, we're gonna do one. <laughs> now, where can people find your music digitally, though? Everywhere on every major digital platform. Right. So and Apple, e- even the ones that are more obscure, like right. um, you know, like iTunes, uh, Tidal, <laughs> stuff that we don't really, you know. But definitely the big ones: Deezer, Spotify, Spotify, Apple Music, Google Music, um, Google awesome. Music, yeah. um, Pandora. Lovely. The majority of them. And social media wise, now this is very important for our audience because we we have a very large social media engagement and following on this uh, station. Uh, what are your social media handles for Facebook and Instagram, etc.? Our social media handles, uh, our Instagram uh, handle is the period underscore period. So like almost like two eyes and a mouth. Right. Amblers. Right. It was the only thing that we could actually get that had Wow, you kept it as simple it. as you could, I see. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on Facebook, it's backslash we are the amblers. So, and that's yeah. really where our, the, the majority of our online presence is. We, we, we don't have a website. We're all on, on social. Well, we're going to encourage the audience to go out and share your music, listen to your music, buy your music, and enjoy your music. That's the most important Mostly thing. enjoy it. Justin, thank you so much. I wish you guys all the best. I think you're a cool band. I think you're unique and original and refreshing for South African music right now. Thank you so much for having us. It's been an honor to be here. All the best, man. Hot 91.9. Playing the best old school and R&B.